Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to show you how to install the emulator on a Windows device. So I have this basic app here, my Star Wars name, to figure out what your Star Wars name is. Let's try to get it to work on the device. So again, I teach AP Computer Science principles. I also teach app design to high school students. And a common issue I run into is half of my students have an Android device and the other half has an iPhone. MIT App Inventor was originally built to work with Android devices, which means your students or any app designer would need to have an Android phone or tablet or Chromebook in order to test their app. However, this does not work in a teaching setting. So this video is going to help you to install the emulator on your Windows device. Now, MIT App Inventor is working on a iOS compatible version. So in the future, this video may no longer be relevant, but as of September 2020, this video is needed if you are teaching or using MIT App Inventor in your classroom and you want all your students to be able to program, create apps, and test their apps and submit them to you. So let's get started. To get our emulators working, we're going to click on Connect and we're going to go to Emulator. You're going to see this message. It's going to come up with an error message because I do not have it installed. It's going to give you this error message here. Need help? I'm going to click on that. So here you can see it is strongly recommended that you use option one or two. Option one is that you use the Android device and you do connect. To do that on here, if I had an Android device, I would simply do connect and AI companion. That will bring up this code. I scan that code with my App Inventor app on my Android phone or device, and it will automatically connect on a real device and you can actually code live. But again, if your students do not have an Android tablet or phone, this option is not working. So option one doesn't work for your students with iPhone devices. Option two, build apps with a Chromebook. Again, some students may not have a, pro, a Chromebook. So this option doesn't work for my students as well. Going down to option three, even though it's not recommended, and the reason it's not recommended, there's some things you cannot do on an emulator. For example, if I build an app where I shake the phone and it does something, I can't shake a emulator device. I have a funny story of a student. We made a Magic 8-Ball app where we shake the Magic 8-Ball on the tablet and it gives you a prediction, just like in real life. Well, I saw my student shaking the monitor and I said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to shake the emulator, that way my app can work. So there are some downfalls to using the emulator, but let's go ahead and check out the instructions. So building your project, install the app using the software setup. So we are currently on a Windows device. Let's select that. So let's go ahead and download this software. I will save it in my downloads. Now that it is done, let's launch it. You can see Microsoft doesn't want you to install anything that's not verified. We're fine for MIT. I'm gonna do install anyway. I'm going to press next, agree. Anyone who uses a computer, sure, I want a desktop icon. And next, and install. I'm going to go ahead and do finish and start this app. So you can see it is currently running. This is the AR starter program. Let's go back to our app. Now I'm going to go connect. I'm going to just reset my connection and now let's try emulator. I'll pull this up so you can see what's happening. It is launching the emulator. I'm going to go ahead and unlock the phone. There's my emulator, which is an Android device on my computer. You can see here my app is out of date even though I just downloaded it so I want to actually up, upgrade that so I'm going to click OK. To update the app is now being installed on your device please wait for the emulator screen approved so let's click on this just so you can see everything that's going on. Application installing will replace another application I'm going to click OK. You need to make sure that you read this. When the update finishes, choose Done. Do not click Open, then go to the App Inventor web browser, click Connect menu, Reset Connection, then Reset the device. So here, I'm going to push. Got it. 
come back over here. So now I'm going to click install. So now I'm going to click done. I'm going to come back to my app inventor. Again, I'm going to click reset connection. Then I'm going to go back to emulator. You can see it's currently working. It's going to update, and we should see our My Star is Name app. So you can see it works. I have an emulator here that is actually playing my app. Let's see why it's playing the song. When my screen initializes, I'm playing the Star Wars song. Let's test out some of this other code in the emulator. So my image logo, if I click on Star Wars name, it'll say the force is strong within you and then play lightsaber. Let's see if that works. Let's try this. If I touch button start, it'll stop playing the Star Wars song, it'll play a lightsaber sound, and it'll go to another screen called my Star Wars name. So this is my Star Wars name. It will take a second for the emulator to load. That's why they suggest you use a tablet or an Android device. It just takes a while to load. But you can see it does work. So let's try this. Let's see if it will compute my Star Wars name. So I'm going to type Jamie is my first name. Gantz is my next name. Weaver is my mother's maiden name. And Detroit is the city I was born. So if I press start, it should give me what my Star Wars name would be. Hello, can shall we that the force is strong within you? So again, you can see my name is Ganja Wida, and the emulator is working. So if your students do not have a Android device, they have iPhones, or they might not even have a cell phone, um, they can use the emulator to actually build apps in App Inventor and turn those into you for your class.